Okay, once you've made something in InDesign and you want to put it on your website, what you need to do is export it as a Flash document. So we're going to go to File, Export, and then uh, under the format, we're going to choose Flash Player SWF. Now, when you make something in the actual program Flash, you actually save it as a document that ends with .fla for Flash. This SWF stands for Shockwave Flash. Um, Shockwave is the company that used to own Flash, so it's a little confusing. It's not necessarily recognizable, but anytime you see a document that ends in the .swf, it means that it's a Flash file, but it's no longer editable. It's a playable Flash file, and that's what we want because we want to be able to play this on our website. So we're going to choose Flash Player and save it. Um, it's going to ask us a few questions. Do we need an HTML file? We actually don't need one. Um, we're going to be placing this on a WordPress site, which already has um, HTML that makes the site run. So we do not need that HTML file. Um, I'm going to keep the scale at 100%. If you are making something with photos, it's best not to scale it afterward. Always work with the photos first. Make sure that you size the photos correctly and then try not to scale it or it's just going to blow those photos up and they're going to start to look really pixelated. Okay. Um, this warning that there's overset text, what that's, that's telling me is that there's text somewhere that's in this gray area that is not going to end up on the document. And that's okay because I remember that I um, copied a text box and left it off the document because it was extra. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we're done with InDesign, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. The next thing that you uh, want to do is actually sign into your FTP uh, client, and I've got mine up right here. And you're going to need to add this Swift file to your site, and we need to add it in a very certain location. We're going to add it in WP Content. We're going to have to make a folder, so let's make a new folder, and I'm going to call this Flash. Hit OK. I'm going to go into that folder, and now I'm just going to drag that Swift file and drop it into the Flash folder. Okay, there it is. So now the next thing that I need to do is go into my WordPress site, and I'm going to have to tell WordPress how to get that file that I just placed there. And I'm going to do that um, by using a plugin. Earlier in the semester I asked all of you to install the Swift Object plugin, so you should all have it. If you don't have it before you do the next step, you'll have to go get that plugin and activate it. So I've already activated it. And the way that plugin works is it's going to help us point WordPress to the direction of that file. So we can tell WordPress where that file is so that it can play it on our site. So let's imagine that we want to put that Flash document on a page. I'm going to make a new page. And there's a little bit of code that I need to write in here. And if you ever forget the code, go to your plugins page and click on the Swift Object plugin. Go to that website and it will have the code all written out for you. But I've actually just saved it here so you can go ahead and write this down right off the video. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my page. Now what this is doing is it's pointing uh, WordPress in the direction of that file that I just placed. So this Swift object is a little tag saying that we're putting in some kind of flash file. And then you'll recognize SRC as source. You'll recognize that from an image tag. So now we need to tell WordPress where this file lives. And normally you start the source with HTTP and you do the whole uh, URL, but um, you can actually, when you have files that live in the same folder as the rest of your site, you don't have to write all of that. You can start just by putting the name of the folder that everything is in. So it's in the WP content folder in a folder called Flash that we made, and it's called tutorial.swift. So that's going to point WordPress in the direction of that tutorial Swift that we put in. And we want to say what height and width it is. Again, you don't want to just choose these randomly. You want to try not to increase or decrease the size of the thing that you made too much. You should plan on the size that you want, know that ahead of time, build it that size, and then put it in that size. Don't try to downscale or upscale stuff uh, in you know this far along in the process. And so my document was 600 pixels by 800 pixels. And when I publish that, and then I view the page, 
now my Swift file is embedded right here in the page. Now, we all made these documents the same size. We all made them 800 by 600, but you'll notice that if I were to actually have filled this page out and really developed the site, this is where the sidebar goes. So my sidebar would actually be overlapping this Flash document. That's why it's important to know uh, how wide your pages are and get an idea of how big everything on your site is because then you know when you make a Flash document for your page that this, you know, between here and here is, you know, whatever size it is and you can make your Flash document that size. And you can see that if I click around the Flash is actually working so always test it and just make sure that it works. And that's all there is to it. In the future you can continue to add Flash documents to that Flash folder that we made um, through the FTP client. You can add as many Flash documents in there as you want and then you'll use this code right here to say which of those documents you want to show up on each page.